Hey, tonight's Bible study is coming from 2 Chronicles 7, chapter the 14th verse, and it reads as follows. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, a few things that we have to understand with the context of this verse um, or the verses that were before and after it, and that makes a larger understanding of the scripture and how it fits into what is being said at the time. Um, Solomon had dedicated a temple, um, and the Lord appeared to him and gave him some warnings and reassurances and whatnot. Um, and the Lord appeared to him at night. Um, Solomon had been praying and trying to get the Lord to hear his prayers and answer them as we all do, as we all should. And he had chosen this place as a temple for sacrifices. And remember, it said, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. See, the first thing is, there was something that was going to happen because of your actions. But if your actions were the right actions because you had turned away from the Lord, now Solomon's prayers were that we need to get right. So they had to humble themselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from wicked ways. And wicked ways means the activities of worshiping other gods and going away from God in short sinning. Then I will hear you from where God is always sitting in heaven. And I will forgive your sins and will heal their land. So, excuse me, this is a petition from Solomon also and a repentance. He needed to repent. And he wasn't just praying for him, but he was praying for his people. Um, the, the verse is tied up that Israel and the temple and the fact that from time that God might send these plagues to them, it could still happen, you know, but if you look at it in a few verses, it says, but if you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands I've given you and go off to serve other gods, once again, they were sinning, they were going away. If you do that and you, you worship them, then I will uproot Israel out of here. They'll be gone from my land. And remember who gave them the land. And this temple, I won't accept because you are not doing what you need to do in order for me to accept this temple. If you want me to accept this temple, you have to be obedient unto me. You have to love only me. I am the true God. You have to do as I say. I am the creator of everything. I have given you everything that you have. And you might go somewhere else. Uh, that's not going to work. So he's doing this petition. He's praying. And, and you know, he says, we need to do better as a people. And if you notice, when you're reading it, it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. See, the Lord is already telling you, you're his people who are called by my name, but you got to do something because you're not doing right right now. So you got to humble yourselves and pray and seek my face. And when you seek God's face, you're seeking God and turn from things that go against God, which are wickedness. That's not of God. Then he will hear you. And when you when God hears you, you not only want him to hear you, but you want him to be attentive to when he hears you. Because when he hears you, you're expecting an action if you're praying in confidence. And when we're reading Hebrews, that's what we speak of, praying in confidence. And if you can do that, if you can take the time to do as the Lord says, he says, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. So 
the land will go back to being as it should be. And our land, which, God forget I'm going to say this, but our land, this country, it needs healing. It needs to go away from our wicked ways. And we may not have to have the locusts come down on us and all that, but we got plagues. If you don't think so, you got the storm going down in the Carolina area right now. You got racists hating each other. You got wars going on all over the place. You got the wealthy making more more room for just the wealthy. You got the poor suffering more. There is no sharing of any of the wealth. There is no growth for any poor people. There are so many opportunities in this country that are based on doing things that go against God, but opportunities from loving one another and caring for one another seem to dwindle down because as we love and care for more for one another more, what we do, we say, oh, that's not profitable, that's not worthy, but man, let me do something that is immoral, something that is not pleasing to God, and man will pay for that. Trust me, it's all throughout this world. Man will pay for immoral things. We do not serve God like we should. We do not love one another like the Lord has commanded us. Not asked us, not requested, not pleaded, but commanded us to do. We can't get church right sometimes. We have this sect and this sect and that sect and that sect, or if you want to call them denominations or personal likings to what they like and what they don't like, but there is only one church. There is only one body of Christ. If you don't believe me, look in the book of Revelation. One church, one body of Christ. There is no titles that you see going throughout the world. Uh, I got to talk to this one or that one. And you know what? The reason we're having so many problems is because man has dipped his hand into it again and made these separatist titles that separate people, that segregate people. And we don't need them. But those are plagues. Those are wicked ways that we are in right now. And we are God's people. And we say we're called by his name. We, we claim to be followers of Christ. So, why does the verse tell us to humble yourselves? Because we ain't humbling ourselves. And then it says, pray. Ooh, man. And praying doesn't just pertain to you. Praying is praying for others. That's part of our responsibility to pray for others. If you read the Lord's Prayer, you'll see some of these put right there in your face. And then seek God. You know, in our country, wealth usually doesn't make you seek God. Um, Ill-gotten gain doesn't make you seek God. See, the problem with both of those is you got to humble yourself in those situations. You know, I, I had a friend just talk about the animals that were looting in South Carolina. First of all, they're not animals. They're looting and it's wrong and that's ill-gotten and we shouldn't do that. They're just lost. And the white collar crimes that you don't see and they go to the plush prisons and all that, they're just as bad as the looters, if not worse. The looters are still in water and maybe a TV or so. The white crimes are still in people's 401ks and pensions and any other thing they can steal from. Money is evil in this country because we have a love for it. Money itself is not evil. But the love of it is. And we put it above God. So we have a plague right now going on in the U.S. And we have turned away from God. You can see by how our government is acting. How crooked our government is. How it fl filters down to small communities. We, we don't love one another. We aren't praying for one another, and we're not looking for God like we should. 
And please don't get me wrong. We're going to come into some captivity. And even the ones that love the Lord and are seeking the Lord, we're going to be caught up in this captivity. Because don't forget, with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were right, but they got caught up into it. But the Lord took care of them. But the culture as a whole is not seeking the Lord. We are not trying to get away from our wicked ways. As a matter of fact, we just keep growing in ways to be more perverse, more wicked, more lewd, more crude, more money hungry, more ruthless, more cunning, conniving. It's just so much evil that we keep striving for. And we got to turn from these ways because we're going to get caught up. And when it says, hey, I will forgive your sin and heal the land. Well, that's part of this. If we if we go to the Lord, he's going to forgive the sin and heal the land. But right now, our land may not be getting healed for a while because we love what we do and we should not. We love to be more like the adversary instead of the Lord. And the problem is we have to love being like the Lord in order for us to do well in the afterlife. Not here on this world because you can be like the adversary and excel like a superstar. But most of y'all know you only got from birth to maybe 130 years, maybe, maybe, and that's pushing it nowadays. But I even think that the reason that you don't have so many years to live is because the Lord saw how wicked man could be, and he said, I got to cut down the time. Just my thought, but if you look at the Bible, it shows you as they started going back on ages because people lived a lot longer, and man just keeps growing wicked, and we have enough false prophets out here to help lead you into continuing to be wicked. Stop listening to a man that won't tell you to read your Bible, and that's a man or a woman. Stop listening to somebody telling you the word if you don't go read the word. Read it. Study it. So when somebody tries to give you word or fill you up with word, you can see where they're coming from, and you're supposed to study it. We got to get from these wicked ways, and we want God to hear us from heaven. Now, the, the good thing is there's a reward at the end, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land if we get right. And then in, in verse 15, and I just want to add this on, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive. Remember I said we want the Lord to hear us and do something to the prayers offered in this place. And this was talking about the temple that was built right there that Solomon built for the Lord. But we are mobile temples of God also. And we need to offer the correct the correct offering to the Lord with this vessel that we have. Amen.